here with Andy Cook, who is one of our missionaries in Lisbon, Portugal. I, I want to see the church win and win big. And so for years we did that in the United States in a little town called Panama, and it was, it was great, and we would have stayed there for the rest of our lives. The fall of 2007 got shook all that up, and 15 months later, our family was here. I was born in Madrid, it's a big city of more than six million people. I saw the tremendous need in my own country. Okay. And somehow inside of me, I, 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 I told myself, you know, what, what can I do, oh God? Little by little, I, I began to just pastor young people. Well, I grew up here in Italy, uh, so I grew up in a church planting family. And when I was 19, I understood the privilege of knowing Christ in our type of uh, culture, which is very far from what the gospel would teach. And through uh, regular evangelism and evangelistic lifestyle, we are trying to reach the city for Christ. So what would you say your strategy is for reaching people with the gospel? Is, is there a, a strategy in, in mind, or do you just kind of wing it? Do you, each, each person different, or do you have something in particular that yeah. you find to be most helpful? Well, uh, for myself and my family, we have a strategy that just being friends with, with people and so okay. on. But remember, I am a part of uh, the Conference for the Evangelization of, of Spain. Right. So we try to, to spread the vision that it is possible to do it. Yeah. I mean, I see some pastors that maybe for years and years, the only thing they have is 25 people in the church. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't have that vision. Vision, I will say, if I have to define vision, I will say that uh, vision is a very clear picture of what God wants to do in my country, in my neighborhood, right. with my neighbors. Very clear in my mind. Okay. And I yeah. get excited, you know. Yeah. So I will just put everything I can on, on just uh, trying to, to, to spread the news, you right. know, that, uh, that Jesus is, uh, is so wonderful to know him yeah. and, and so on. So yeah. that's my, I mean, in just uh, simple words and, and short. Yeah. yeah. For a person to show up here on Sunday morning, a lot of things have to have already happened. Right. Um, nobody's going to just walk in here and say, hey, I want to visit this, yeah. you know, this Protestant church and see what it's yeah. like. Yeah. Um, and so I'll give you an example of Domenico Neverina, which is a couple that attends our church. Uh, I met them actually at a Thanksgiving dinner okay. uh, right in this hall um, two year, three years ago, three years okay. ago. Uh, we met for the very first time, and then they they came to an English class that I was teaching. So right. I saw them uh, twice a week uh, for three months. And from there, I, I explained to them that on Mondays, we were getting together and reading, reading the Bible in English if they wanted to come. Okay. Uh, and so they just started coming to that, and we would you know go out to get something to eat together. Uh, we did some sports things together with okay. Domenico, mm -hmm. just building our relationship. Uh, but when they were coming to the English Bible, they met another two or three people that come to our Sunday morning service. And right. so they already knew them. They knew me. Mm -hmm. And so then one Sunday morning, they showed up oh, and really? they already knew four or five people yeah. from our church. That's so it wasn't awesome. awkward for yeah. them to do that. Already developed a few relationships, which is key. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So not just with me. Yeah. Not just with me, but with other people yeah. uh, in our group. And so for them, it's now natural to come yeah. to, uh, to church on Sunday. They haven't accepted Christ yet, yeah. uh, but we're reading the Bible together. And yeah. Lord willing, uh, they will accept him. Yeah. And so it's um, basically building the relationship to where you have the opportunity to share your faith. Yeah. Um, but also getting them involved with other people of your church. Yeah. Um, so that when they do come for that for very first time, it's not too awkward. Yeah, uh, and they, they can feel already at home knowing other people. Yeah. So one of the things that we were able to do, I think it was on the first night that we were here, is we attended uh, just an, an English Bible reading 
small group, mm -hmm. basically. Tell, tell me a little bit about that, maybe how that got started, how things are going with that, sure. the, you know, kind of the makeup of that group and uh, what, what makes it keep, keep running smoothly. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so um, about four years ago, I had a couple of university students from the next town Mm -hmm. that were interested in um, conversational English. Okay. So they wanted to... As opposed to just like... Grammar. grammar. So they, okay. they wanted to yeah. just sit down and chat yeah. in English. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I thought, well, sure, I would love to do that. Yeah. What we would do is we will read the Bible together yeah, in yeah. English. I've got a book. <laughs> I have a book. <laughs> no, it's the Bible. Yeah. And so we started a meeting at a cafe yeah. uh, every Monday. Uh, and we would just open up the Bible and read uh, a section of scripture. We read through first the Gospel of Mark, then John, now reading through now Luke. Luke, yep. Um, just reading through it, and then I asked them questions to make yeah. sure they're understanding the yeah. text. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and so they viewed it as learning English, and I view it as teaching them scripture. <laughs> uh, and so that started four years ago, and we've been meeting regularly uh, with that. Yeah. And the group has grown. It started with two university students, and now we have uh, typically between six and ten people that come yeah. every week. Yeah, and it um, meets in somebody's house. And now, it meets right? in someone's house. Yeah. Yep. A girl from Saudi Arabia who speaks English. Yeah. Uh, she has never in her life read the Bible nor met a Christian before. Yeah. Uh, and so it's a joy to read through Luke with her. Yep. Yeah, I met her last night. Yes, yeah, and she was here at the Thanksgiving dinner last night, and yep. she's coming to help tonight. Yeah, in fact, she was, yeah. uh, we, we uh, met at her apartment, she wasn't even there. Exactly, yes. It, yeah, that's yep. pretty cool. Uh, and so the, the group, let's say if we're all there, there are 10 of us, yeah. uh, and there are three believers and seven non-believers. Yeah. Just reading the Bible for the first time. Yeah, so it's 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 an exciting group to be part of. I look forward to every Thursday night. Yeah, I can uh, see to why. be with them. Yeah, yeah, that's excellent. Yep, that's very cool. For most people in this culture, because they maybe heard a guy but they don't really know him. Okay. Uh, what we really want to eventually get them to is a chronological Bible study where they can okay. discover who God really is and what he's really like and what God is really all about and what God expects of them. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that, we, we have 40 Bible stories mm -hmm. that we take uh, apart and go through in that chronological pattern. At the end of that, then they're in a position to make a, an informed choice. Mm -hmm. So as far as leading people to Christ, that's probably the most effective tool that we use right. for making disciples. Once they become followers, we want to immediately get them involved in doing ministry alongside of us. Okay. Because we think that, um, well, it's a, it's a philosophy thing, but we think that fellowship that's done just as well, fellowship is the only goal often kind of leads to clicks and keep, or just keeping that holy huddle kind of mentality. Yeah. So what we try to do is we try to get people doing ministry alongside of us right. and us with them. And then the stuff of life just automatically kind of comes up. I mean, when you're right. you're doing a kids ministry or whatever with somebody, and you got we always want to pray before and then spend time afterwards. And, mm -hmm. You know, that's when they start telling you afterwards, hey, you know, I'm really just struggling with, you know, this issue of my family or depression or a coworker mm -hmm. or whatever. So we right. we try to do discipleship. Call it on the job training. I don't know. You know, we do, well, we decide like a need to know basis. When exactly. Somebody needs to know something. They're more inclined to learn it because yeah. I, I see where this yes. where this needs to happen. Where this can be yes. really helpful and necessary. That's well said. Well said. Tell me a little bit about even the room that we're in right now. What what's what normally takes place in here, and then also you know why we set up like this. Yes, uh, absolutely. So, um, as a church, we felt the need to find a public place to meet. We've okay. been meeting in our home. So you don't um, have your own building? Your own we do not, no. We do not okay. have our own building. Uh, it'll be too expensive yeah. uh, for us to rent something long-term for now. Right, yeah. Uh, and so our idea was to find a public place to invite people to right. if they wanted to just observe what happened. Yeah. Just and to check it out. Just to check it out. And mm -hmm. so we found uh, this hall right here. It's okay. part of a communist social center. Perfect. Um, yep. they, basically what happens here is there are a lot of sports activities, kids activities, uh, yeah. cultural activities. Yeah, I see lot, lots of uh, game fields. Yep, yeah, they're playing soccer. soccer, there's a volleyball court, 
Uh, and so the community kind of bumps around yeah, this cafe, place. Cafe right There's a the cafe. Yeah. Uh, they have some programs for elderly people here, yeah. uh, for children that are in need of learning Italian, actually. Yeah. Um, so we have North Africans that are coming through. Uh, okay. And so we thought this would be a perfect place for us to, to be a light. Right. Uh, and so we rent this hall on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Uh, every Sunday morning we can use it. Uh, we just you know, set up our chairs and bring instruments and, and prepare yeah. for our church time together. Yeah. Uh, and what you see here is all these tables. So this is one example of how we're involved in our community. So yeah. we've invited uh, our city to be part of our Thanksgiving dinner. Right. Now Italians don't celebrate Thanksgiving, of course. Yeah. Uh, but we want to be able to be a witness to explain why we're thankful to God yeah. uh, and just to introduce uh, these people to what our church is about. Yeah. Uh, and so we have 96 uh, seats set up for tonight yeah. uh, and they will be full. Yeah, last, the, last night we had 97, 97 people. 97. Yeah, one uh, guy standing in the corner. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. these are all people from our community. We have yeah. obviously a few people from our church. Yeah. Um, last night there were six or seven. Yeah. And then the rest are all non-believers that are part of our community, that are getting to know us, uh, and coming to something like a Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Uh, and that gives us just an opportunity to explain a little bit about our church uh, yeah. to them. And one thing I was able to do last night was invite them all to our church service on Sunday morning, yeah. which is exactly in the same hall. Yeah. And so they've been here, they've met a few of the people of the church. Yeah. And so now uh, it would be a little bit less difficult for yeah. them to step in yep. uh, into this situation where they think is a cult. Right. And um, they'll tear down some of those barriers absolutely. that they, they may have already have. Yep. Preconceived ideas even as to the, the type of people that you are. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, one more thing we do in this hall is the summer camps. Yeah. And so we actually partner with the community center okay. to run uh, for two weeks their um, their kids camps and so we okay. have between 50 and 60 kids every week mm -hmm. uh, and we do it right in this room we'll do the crafts and the English type lessons yeah. and then we use the sports camps uh, to teach okay. American sports to these Italian okay. kids yeah uh, so that's yeah. Uh, just another uh, fun way to be involved in our community. Well, those are those are things that they'd be interested in. Absolutely. You know, whether it's yes. learning English or learning, mm -hmm. you know, how, how people do things in the States, that's an attractive yep. thing yep. Uh, they're, for, for your culture. Absolutely. They're very curious. Yeah. Uh, and as I said, they think we're a cult, so they initially they will be scared of us, but as they get to know us through these types of events or through the sports or English, right. they understand that we're just normal people. Yeah. Uh, and drinking that, weird Kool Aid. They were drinking weird Kool Aid, of course. <laughs> right. uh, but yeah, we, love in, Christ. Kool -Aid. <laughs> we love Christ. We love Christ, and we're we're just living that out day to day yeah. in a very simple way. Yeah. Excellent. What is your role in discipleship, uh, as far as as it relates to to the church, and, and also even. I know you've talked about the, the Timothys, you know, yep. the, these young men, but also even in the other people in the church, there's, there's a discipleship role in, in, in yep. there too. Yeah, well, the moment I, I, I prepare some people for that, I will quit doing it myself. You, you know what I mean? Okay. If they find that there is a problem, they will call me. They will say, Carlos, you have to see this person because I, I don't know how to deal with this you know right. during the discipleship classes yeah. you know so when you equip a person for a specific role or a yeah. task right then then you yeah, step right. back and let right. them do it right yeah and and then but uh yeah. when i disciple uh i mean leaders right i do it myself okay yeah, i do it myself mm -hmm. and uh what i try to do for them is that uh, they will come with me to visit a sick right. person okay. they come with me i mean they, They'll come home and spend time with me here. They, we, they, they will eat um, with me, you know. I mean, yeah. we do a lot of things uh, together. So you model it for them. Yeah, right. They, they see you. Right. Sometimes if I have to go to the north, I, I take some of them with me. Yeah. So th they will see how, how we do things outside our church in that, yeah. uh, in that sense. And, uh, and they like that. Yeah. They really like. And they are learning. And uh, you teach them I mean, they see you day by day what you do, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, th that's very good. That's, that's very good. Yeah. But uh, 
uh, in the church, uh, you see every, everybody has a, a job description, so everybody knows what, what to do in, right. that, in that sense, and uh, they stick to the, to the task, and uh, they do a good job. And, mm -hmm. uh, as I told you, when they have a problem, then, mm -hmm. of course, uh, they call me and uh, we'll try to solve the problem. Yeah. So imagine an Italian that has never read his Bible before, or never read the Bible, yeah. um, starts reading the Bible with us and gets saved, accepts Christ, but literally knows nothing of what it means to be yeah. a Christian. He yeah. doesn't know who Abram is or yeah. Moses. He's or, never been modeled to them from, from family members. No. And so um, they are starting from scratch. And yeah. so they'll accept Christ, decide to follow Christ, uh, through reading scripture, obviously, and having that explained to them, but then they need to grow, and right. so it's so essential for them to be um, to be discipled. Yeah, and also because they are probably the only only believer that their relatives have ever seen. Right, uh, they're the only person that has ever accepted the gospel in their family. Yeah, and so now they need to be encouraged and discipled so that then they can reach their family and yeah. their neighbors and their yeah. uh, colleagues at work. And so discipleship is key. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, I think it's been pretty awesome. You know, even going to the English Bible reading time is, you know, you're, you're teaching them how to read the Bible and how to ask questions and how to, how to probe it and get the, get the most out of it, even before they're a believer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I can, I can imagine that, you know, once some of these people give their lives to Christ, uh, they're already going to be on the fast track uh, to learning more about who God is and, and how to live a godly life just because of the way that you've been able to introduce them to, to reading scripture and making that a normal part of their life. So I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. keep, keep that up. I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> Portugal ruled the world in the 1500s, okay? Since then, they've been greatly humbled. Um, okay. They they had a dictator from the 19 teens to 1974, and they're kind of embarrassed by that. Mm -hmm. That they allowed that to happen for so long. Mm -hmm. um, they had to have some pretty high profile bailouts from the European Union and stuff. Mm -hmm. So as I see that kind of play out in the people, as they're they're kind of a proud people, but they've been a humbled people. Uh, one of the ways that you serve people here I, as by letting them feel good and look good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so we've had to learn to minister from a position of strength, or from weakness instead of strength. Right. So like a lot of the friends that we have are people who've helped us because maybe my Portuguese isn't that great. Or right. like the table that we're sitting at right now, this, uh, the, the, the owner of the cafe that I go to regularly. Yeah. Um, I bought this from him, yeah. our sign. He helped me figure out where to go get that or whatever. So as I go to him, I'm like, without being a pest, but I'm like, hey, Huey, I'm working on this project. Can you help me, you know, know where to do something, whatever. Then he feels great. Yeah. And as he feels great, then he wants to be closer to us. And, and our whole deal, Dave, I don't, I don't think I'm answering the question. I'm not no, getting no, off the strategy. Fine. But yeah. our whole deal is this. There's... Another part of the culture is there's kind of this natural distrust and cynicism. Okay. Everybody wants to have friends. It's a very relational culture. Everybody wants to have friends, but nobody wants to have more friends like the ones they have. Oh. Okay? <laughs> okay? Because most, they, one of the things, it's really bad, but one of the things about the culture is they don't, they don't tend to reconcile. And so there's tons of broken relationships, right. tons of parents and kids yeah. who haven't spoken in 20 and 30 years. That's the norm. Okay. You know, there's tons of, of that kind of stuff. So... So what, what, because of that distrust and the fact that anybody's not Catholic as a cult, you know, that's another cynicism or distrust thing. And we've had so many Brazilian cults go through and steal people's money and stuff like that. So because of all that, our strategy is this. We try to either create environments right. or join environments where we can see people week after week after week. Right. So that we can earn their trust. Mm-hmm so that we can invite them to something that's appropriate for them, okay? Right. Yeah. Whether that's an English club or a secret Bible study or something like right. that. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where the, you know, the culture and our strategy had, you know, yeah. are, are built to support each other.